Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. This video, well, we're kind of getting back to basics. We're building boxes to put in boxes. Essentially, I have built a seven drawer storage cabinet that is mobile. Yep, it does move around. It's for my wife. It's gonna go in her studio. Really back to basics project. I'm gonna show you how you can make this yourself. Just watch the video. And also this top, well, pretty special to me. I'll explain why in just a bit. Thanks for joining me. Let's get right into it. Hey, real quick, I'm gonna explain why that top of that mobile unit is so special to me. Well, it was used in our wedding. It was our sweetheart table. We used it in the reception. We used it for displaying a few things and then we sat at it as we ate our meal. And it's one of those projects where I had to build it in between houses, in between my small one car garage shop. We lived in an apartment for eight months and I had to build that at the apartment. Like I walked outside in the little area there outside the door and I built the whole thing uh, with a circular saw and a, <laughs> a screw gun and yeah, pretty sentimental stuff. So we're gonna keep it alive, keep it in the family and uh, let's get right into this build. Let's go build it. So this project is primarily made up out of plywood. Yes, even the drawer faces, I'm gonna use one sheet of plywood and attempt to, you know, match the grain up, which I think I did pretty well, but you gotta stay tuned for that. Anyway, this is five eighths of an inch plywood. I'm breaking it down into pieces that are gonna represent the bottom, the top, and the sides, and also the partitions in which all the drawers are gonna fit. So you can see there's a lot of rip cuts, a lot of cross cuts going on, and we're gonna go ahead and once the pieces are cut, we're gonna assemble things. And I'm just gonna make this real simple. I'm gonna use a butt joint here. I'm gonna make sure it's square. And then I'm gonna tack it in with some brads. Of course, putting glue in between the joint as well. I'm then gonna come back and reinforce everything with screws. Of course, you're not gonna see those screws. They're gonna be underneath the tabletop or on the bottom. But this is one of my favorite ways of putting things together. It's quick, it's easy and it's relatively strong as well once the whole piece is all combined. Again, make sure you check for square. As you can see here, this is coming together pretty nicely. You can't see a single gap anywhere. And like I said, I reinforce everything with screws and what is that? Excuse me. There are corbels on top of the xylophone. Yeah. yeah. Can I move them for you? Okay. That's a great use of that joiner, I tell you. <laughs> Love it. All right, tell the people hello. hello. Say hello. hello. All right, keep playing. So these moments are absolutely the best. If you are a parent and you have your kids in the shop with you, let me know down below. You people on this channel are so extremely nice to me and my kids, but having them in here, I know maybe it's not the safest thing on the planet, but you know what? I'm never gonna get these memories back and it's just one of those amazing things. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna build up the sides with another piece of 5 8 inch plywood, essentially making these makeshift dados for the shelves. Goodness. Yo! I mean, she is always at this thing. Anyway, here we go. Lather, rinse, repeat. We're gonna build these things up, clamping them in place, gluing brads, and we're good to go. You can see here, it does make the structure a little bit more robust, a little stronger, and I didn't feel like cutting dados because I don't have a dado stack and that's one way to get around it. Okay, now it's time to put in the space that's gonna be between the drawers. That's gonna give the support to the shelf above. These pieces do not go all the way to the back of the unit because I don't wanna create a, basically a big air cavity that the drawer is gonna try to push its way in and then pull a vacuum on its way out. There's gonna need some room for these drawers to breathe due to the fact they're not spaced with drawer slides. They're just friction fit. He doesn't like ice cream? He likes numbers. 
Hey, yo, whoa, whoa, whoa. Quit eating the tape measure. Okay, I gotta, I gotta go fix that. Uh oh. Okay, so let's make some drawers now after I rectify that issue. That little kid and his tape measures, my goodness, he steals them all the time. All right, so we're going to cross cut a few pieces down here just to make the drawers real simply. Again, I got a little trick here for you. You don't want to put your piece when you're cross cutting on a sled directly up against the fence. That's no bueno. You want to use a stop block to give yourself some clearance and then you're good to go. When I put these together, I'm going to show you a little trick I use on the bench. Once all these pieces are cut, I lay them out, get them all organized, and then I actually take my armor tool bench and I take a Rockler 90 degree angle piece that you're supposed to attach on the inside of the piece. But instead, I put it through the dog holes, use those hold fast to keep it in place, and then use it as a 90 degree reference to go ahead and tack these drawers in place. As you see, it builds them pretty quickly and pretty easily. And once the back is cut or the bottom is cut, there you go. You've got yourself a drawer and that's how I do it. Having this set up makes this super quick. Definitely recommend trying it if you haven't already. And there you go. Those are the four largest of the drawers complete. And now I got to make the smaller ones at the top. It's a series of three. Now, again, these drawers are going to be able to be taken out and brought to wherever my wife needs them, but they need to be soft to the touch. So we're going to go ahead and sand them all down and make sure we're good to go there. And we are. Now, time to take a piece of this. Actually, this is an eighth inch piece of plywood that comes in between the Baltic birch when I order it. So I don't even really know if you could purchase this thing, but I'm using it anyway. So we're going to use it as a back. I'm sure you could buy some door skin or a piece of, you know, Luan at the hardware store. Uh, but this is what I'm using here. So I'm taking it and I'm going to flush trim all the way down. We're going to put a slight bevel on it as well. And I forgot to mark where the inside pieces were and I need to tack those in place as well. So we do that. And once the back is on, I look and make sure no blowout and we're good to go. And once the back is on a piece like this, it really does give it all that stability and all that rigidity that it really needs. And it's amazing how it just transforms the strength. Now, we're going to flip that piece upside down. And before I install these casters, I'm going to make myself a little 90 degree jig here using some Starbond and some activator. Again, I got coupon codes for this stuff. I use it more like a tool than a glue, as you can see here. This is going to give me the gap I need exactly to have these casters be put in place at the corners for a repeatable results but i realized that in order to do it on the other side i needed to tack in two more pieces so there you go and you can see it works pretty simply you put it there on a 90 degree and then you rest your caster up against it and then you install it just like this we repeat this process on all four sides and these casters are in this place for a reason i don't want these wheels to ever come outside the piece so essentially no matter where you roll this up against the wall or whatever the wheels will never hit a baseboard they will never hit a wall because they are within the parameters of the perimeter of the piece you got me all right So because I haven't installed the hardware yet, I need a method to actually pull these drawers out when I make sure they fit in place. Using a piece of blue tape down the side, fold it over to make a makeshift handle works pretty well. As you can see, it would be a struggle to get this drawer out if I hadn't have taken these precautions. Okay, so this is my attempt at taking a piece of 3 8 inch Baltic birch and being very careful with my cuts. Reason being, I'm gonna use the single piece to make all of the drawer faces. Now. Why is that important? Well, I'm going to make sure that I cut accurately and I'm very deliberate about where I place these because I want the grain in the Baltic birch to all match up when the piece is finally done. I want all the drawers when they're closed to have it look like one continuous piece. And that's why I'm taking my time with this. I've never really done this technique with, with plywood because why? I mean, I've never made drawer faces with plywood that I cared about too much, but this is going to be inside the home and you might as well try to make it as nice as possible, even though it is, even though it is plywood. <laughs> Careful, everybody. Okay, so you're going to see me take some careful measurements here. And I've actually got a piece of Baltic screwed up underneath the piece to give me a reference as the bottom. So that's going to really help me do this. Now, I'm making sure everything is lined up, making sure all the measurements are right. I mean, measure twice, cut once, right? Also, don't hit your cord on your camera or this happens. Well, that was unfortunate, but 
no harm, no foul. So like I said, measure twice, cut once. I've never heard anybody say, measure once, cut once, get good with wood. I've never heard that, but maybe it should be a thing. Mm, maybe not. <laughs> so I take my time here and I just make these initial cuts and just barely sneak up on the measurement. You heard this term before, sneak up on it. And as you see, a little popsicle stick in there and we've got a pretty good start. It's flush on both sides and there's a nice gap in the middle. And also, as I work my way up, you can see, taking my time, everything looks like it's coming together pretty nicely. I'm actually pretty impressed with how this turned out and this actually was a pretty cool effect, even though it is plywood. And you can see the plywood's still a little bit fuzzy. Definitely gotta do a final sanding, but I like it. I like this a lot. Let me know what you guys think, man. I really am curious to see if you think that plywood can be as nice as I'm hoping it's going to be. I want your opinion on that for sure. Of course, using a sanding block to get all the edges just right, and Baltic birch is great, but it does, it does splinter a little bit. It does kind of do this like, you know, it, it tears apart just a little bit on the edges sometimes. But you know, of course, I got Starbond to the rescue, really simply. Activator glue, you're good to go. You sand it back down, it's like it never even happened. And honestly, you wouldn't have to worry about this if you were using hardwood, but I'm not in this case, but I'm glad I have this stuff to really help me out. Look at that. It's like it never happened. Pretty cool stuff. In the description, I've got my coupon code. Check it out. So because these drawers go all the way in and when they hit the back, they are recessed by about an eighth of an inch from the front of the unit. I need to put some spacer blocks in the back. That way the drawers actually stick out a bit. It makes attaching the drawer faces just so much easier if there is complete contact between the drawer and the drawer face. You'll see what I mean here. So to install the drawer faces, I've taken the hardware and I've marked out where the hardware is going to have its fastening points and I'm drilling those holes in the drawer faces themselves. You'll see what I mean here in just a second. But you got to take careful measurements here and just make sure you take your time. I can't stress enough. Take your time while you're building things because you don't want one little misjudgment to ruin all the work you've done thus far. Okay, we're gonna rebuild the drawer faces up on the unit with the drawer sticking out from the unit a little bit. And this is gonna make such quick work of this. All right, so we're good to go. I've got the three holes drilled on the three drawers at the top. And then I've got the appropriate holes drilled on the four drawers in the bottom. And how I'm gonna do this? Well, the, the drawers on the bottom are gonna be flush mounted so I can actually use the mounting holes to tack that in place. And the ones on top, I'm just gonna use a screw in the actual hardware hole to go ahead and adhere it to the drawer. Pretty easy stuff. Once you pull it out, I wanna, I wanna stress something real quick. Do not set this directly on the workbench. Reason being is that, well, <clears throat> that drawer has a lip on the bottom and you don't want that thing moving around with the only fastener you have is one screw in the middle. Okay, hope that makes sense. So as you pull this out, make sure you clamp it in place. I didn't on the first one and I had to go back and remeasure it, but this is what I'm talking about. Set it down flat so it overhangs and then come back and reinforce it with the four screws at the four corners. And this is how I do it, ladies and gentlemen. It turns out great every time. And now you've got a mounting hole for the hardware that you used to help install the drawer face. Looking good. Okay, moving on to staining this piece. We're using Kona by Verathane. It's not sponsored by them. My wife just likes this color a lot. I've got my mise en place here ready to go. A little shout out to Babbage if you get that reference. We're gonna flood the surface with a foam brush. We're gonna wipe it down with one shop towel and then we're gonna polish it off with another. This is how I'm gonna do it. I basically sanded all this down to 220, flooded it with mineral spirits and then let it dry and then sanded it again. And then I've put on the stain as you see here. We're gonna go ahead and flood the face frame of it a little bit. You're not gonna see this, or there is no face frame, just flood the front edge. And now once all that's dry and ready to go, time to turn our attention to the finish. All right, and we're going to my finish of choice for most furniture projects, which is Halcyon Clear by Total Boat. You gotta check this stuff out. I've got links down below for all this, but I'm using the clear and the matte finish, and I'm gonna combine them both. I'm kind of giving myself a semi-gloss, and I love spraying it on. You can brush it on, it does great. Follow your manufacturer's instructions. What they recommend is doing three coats and not sanding between each coat. You can put these coats on an hour after each other, once it's cured for 12 hours after that, give it a light sanding about 320 and then 
go ahead and spray or brush on your final coat and you will have a durable, beautiful finish. I guarantee it. Again, all the links are down below. Check them out. But this is how I do it. I basically turn my entire shop into a spray booth and I do drawer by drawer and I've done the whole piece as well. I'm actually spraying multiple projects at a time because I don't want to turn my shop into this and then just have it be for one project. No, no, no. You don't disassemble all this just to do one project. Come on. <laughs> but this is a gorgeous finish. I want you guys to check out this last shot. What you're going to see here is the first coat of finish on and it is absolutely stunning. Check that out. So once that cures and sets up, we're gonna be good to go. All right, turning our attention to the tabletop, you think, oh no, what are you doing? Well, you're gonna ruin the top. Well, the kids already did that. You can see there's crayons and markers all over it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the top down. We're gonna leave the edge of the table, the original color from the wedding, but the top's gonna to be changed to match the rest of the piece. So the three pieces that are holding the tabletop together, I do need to put some spacers in between them just to raise it up just a bit. That way the drawers have clearance when this is installed onto the unit. And again, we're just gonna stain this thing the same color as the unit itself. My wife is an artist herself. She's gonna do something to the top of this, so I'm not gonna put a finish on it. I'm gonna leave it stained, and then basically that's it. So if you wanna see what she does to it eventually, I will give you an update on that, an update video on some various things like I put on my second channel. I have that link down below. If you wanna get a more behind the scenes look, kind of some things we're doing around here, please subscribe down there to that one and look forward to seeing you on the other side. Okay, we're gonna start by putting the hardware on the sides. There's gonna be some handles where you can move the unit around from. And then the drawer faces. Well, I'm gonna take the drawer out. I'm gonna continue drilling that hole through the actual drawer itself. And then I realized the mounting screw that came with the hardware isn't quite long enough to reach. So I don't wanna just drill a hole in there. So I'm using one of those countersinks and that seemed to work pretty well. Uh, once I push this thing through, I have just enough meat on the other side Yep, there you go, to grab those threads and install it. I like to install these by hand. You don't wanna strip anything out. Plus you wanna have everything lined up just right. And there you go. That's how I install the hardware on a single mounted drawer. Now, the ones on the bottom, well, there are two mounting places, you can see. The four drawers on the bottom here are a little different than the three on top. I'll show you that in a second, but let me mount this tabletop to it. And of course I've got a little bit of space to work in. So I've got my 90 degree attachment for my drill. And I'm just putting in some screws from the bottom up to the top, making sure that they're the appropriate length. You don't want to blow through anything and everything went fine. So here are the last four drawers. These, this is actually the easiest kind of hardware to install where you don't have to worry about lining too much up. These have six screws. They're going to screw right in and now we're good to go. I really love how this turned out. Seeing it all come together, it's a pretty big smile on my face. And here are finally some beauty shots. Check it out, everybody. Hey, before I send that off into the house, I just want to say thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate you being here. And this is one of those projects that I've been meaning to do for a long time for her. I'm so glad to get it done. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to hear what you think about it. Leave me a comment down below. And again, you guys are awesome. I really appreciate your viewership. There's also links down below to various things if you want to help support the channel. I do have a Patreon campaign as well. And also, thank you so much just for watching. It really does. Your viewership really does mean a whole lot. You guys have a wonderful day. And hopefully... I've inspired you to go build something like this yourself. Pretty fun. All right. See you on the next one.